I wonder whether the panicked executives at HBO have just pulled Gone with the Wind from their streaming list were aware that Hattie McDaniel, who played the Civil War era house slave Mammy, was the first African American actor, male or female, to ever win an Oscar. This iconic film depicted the reality of those Civil War days slavery, racism, and prejudice. It's a film I've watched dozens and dozens of times over. Indeed, my younger sister Melanie is even named for one of the lead characters in the film. And rather, than a film worthy now of a politically correct warning, it's a film where its whole context is the epic and convulsive struggle of a place we now know as the United States to rid the appalling stain of slavery from its land. No one could watch this film and conclude that slavery was somehow justified or that racism and prejudice was somehow excused. Indeed, part of the film's greatness is the palpable wisdom and decency of its lead black characters. Before the age of Google, where we have more information than ever at our fingertips, but we know so little, this movie set me on a course to pick up books and encyclopedias to learn more about this era and ended up with me studying US history at school and university and also studying in the United States as a young person for some time. And that's what good art does. It's a moral teacher. And whatever the faults of Hollywood in those days, its leading spirits did not suffer from the historical ignorance and cultural cowardice that's all too common today. One of the West's most corrosive weaknesses in modern times is that dramatic works, films, plays, novels, they're not studied in terms of their overall impact, but sliced and diced on the basis of how they treat women, blacks, gays and other minorities. Now, I don't imagine that the senior executives at HBO are entirely ignorant. I suspect many of them have actually watched the film Gone with the Wind. But instead of asserting its artistic and moral stature against any challenge, this masterpiece has become a pawn in their pathetic gesture politics, their cringeworthy attempts to show just how woke they are. What of the protesters defacing statues of Winston Churchill too, who defeated Nazism? Mahatma Gandhi, who liberated India, and Captain James Cook, who brought much of the world to Western knowledge? Do the anti-racism protesters actually know anything at all about the lives of these great heroes, other than a comic book version where their massive achievements are nothing compared to a few transgressions against today's more refined sensibilities. Successive generations have admired them because they were the best of their contemporaries. And if we are better than our forebears, it's only because people like them have showed us the way. Were they perfect? No. But neither are we. And if history teaches us anything, it's that understandings do deepen over time. So that we should never assume that we have the last word in wisdom just because on some issues we think we know better than they did. The history of the West is full of enormities, of the brutal mistreatment of minorities, of genocide. But the fact that we recognise that and strive to make amends and resolve constantly to be better shows that there's nothing like learning and knowing the whole picture. But history, what really happened as opposed to a garbled misunderstanding of it is exactly what more and more of us just don't know. An Australia Institute survey three years ago showed that less than half of all Australians knew that Australia Day commemorated the arrival from Britain of the first fleet. Hardly surprising, I suppose, when the Deputy Chief yes, Health good. Officer of Victoria mixed up yep, Captain Cook with Governor Phillip in a tweet saying, what a racist country we are. A Centre for Independent Studies survey two years ago showed that of Australians aged between 25 and 40, 58% had a favourable view of socialism. 59% believed that capitalism had failed. Again, hardly surprising given that 51% couldn't identify Mao 
and 52%, 42%, beg your pardon, 42% couldn't identify Lenin. 56% of the very same cohort were convinced that we spend less on health and education than we did a decade ago, when in fact real spending is up 30%. As I've said, rewriting history is a very dangerous move. Worse still, when we don't even know any of it anymore in the okay. first place.